jetted air-to-air -air missiles to boost its military readiness. And because of that, the president is warning that the United States is ready to use devastating military force. We are totally prepared for the second option, not a preferred option. But if we take that option, it will be devastating. I can tell you that devastating for North Korea. That's called the military option. If we have to take it, we will. North Korea, though, seems confused about Mr. Trump's use of the words devastating force. I say that because North Korean officials have reached out for Trump tweet interpreters. They actually asked Bruce Klingner to come to Pyongyang for meetings about the president's messaging. Klingner is a senior research fellow for Northeast Asia at the Heritage Foundation. Thanks for being with me. So, so why you? Thank you. Uh, well, I think given the change in administration in Washington that North Korea is likely reaching out to people that they feel represent more the, the mainstream view right now, uh, which is increased pressure on North Korea while leaving a door open for diplomacy as opposed to leading with engagement, and uh, perhaps people that they think may have a, a greater access to the Trump administration. So are you going to go? Well, since September 1st, the Americans aren't allowed to go except for if they get a special visa, uh, which really is reserved for media or uh, humanitarian assistance or government officials. So uh, I, I've said no. I'm willing to meet outside of North Korea. And, you know, to be honest, I think you have to look at the uh, situation with Otto Warmbier and the other Americans that have been uh, detained. Absolutely. Um, do you think it do you think it would be helpful to cool tensions, though, to, to reach out to someone from Pyongyang and kind of explain to them what exactly the president is saying? Uh, well, the, the reaching out to American uh, either academics or former officials has been going on for years. There have been conferences. There was another one in Switzerland uh, recently. So there have been discussions. Uh, both sides uh, get, try to get a better understanding of the positions of the other government uh, as well as conveying messages. Uh, but, of course, North Korea could reach out directly to the United States government if they have a signal or if they uh, want to send a message or, or simply to exchange views. Uh, when North Korea closed the New York Channel, that's where the U.S. and North Korean government officials at the U.N. missions in New York City talked to each other, uh, North Korea closed that last July after the U.S. designated Kim Jong-un uh, for human rights violations. Then they mm -hmm. reopened it in order to well, facilitate the return of Otto Warmbier. Well, let me ask you specifics. If you were to talk to someone from Pyongyang and they said, what does President Trump mean when he says devastating force, what would your answer be? Well, I, I would say there have been conflicting messages coming from the administration, but uh, you know, if you s scrape away some of the, the strong words in both the U.N. General Assembly speech and, and the recent speeches, uh, I think the important point is that the context uh, of the president's comments seem to be in, re in response to a North Korean attack, the U.S. would respond firmly, which has been longstanding U.S. policy for decades. Uh, earlier this year, uh, Mr. Trump and Mr. Tillerson and uh, H.R. McMaster, National Security Advisor, seemed to be hinting more at a preventative attack. Uh, but I think more recently, it does seem to be sort of longstanding reactive attack. So, so, so what's the answer to all of this? Because it seems from the outside looking in that things are getting ever more heated and we're moving ever closer to some kind of military solution. Well, really, on the Korean Peninsula, people will tell you that they're really on the knife edge of a crisis every day. Uh, we've had really always high tensions, and it just goes up or down uh, sort of a, a bit in response to North Korean violations, the U.N. resolutions, uh, or military activity. So uh, right now, we've got uh, North Korea nearing, if not already completed, the ability to hit the U.S. Uh, homeland with nuclear weapons. Uh, it continues to a very rapid pace of nuclear and missile tests. So uh, that's what's driving up the tension is their defiance of the international community. All right, Bruce Klingner, thanks so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. Thank you. President Trump, you're welcome. President Trump's EPA director is getting a taxpayer funded $25,000 soundproof security.